Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. I'm Nilesh, and in this video, we are going to look at inspection. And these are the topics we'll cover partial dependence plots, individual conditional expectations plots, and permutation feature importance. So, this is just a brief overview of how to use these methods that are available in scikit-learn. The objective with all these methods is to uh, find an easier way to uh, kind of communicate how the features affect the target values or if there are any model performance issues, can you identify any issues either with the features that can help improve the model performance. And one of the assumptions, like important assumptions with these methods is that each feature is considered to be independent of other features when we are comparing it with the target. Now, with partial dependence plots and individual conditional expectation plot, PDP and ICE, these can be used with uh, one feature at a time or we can compare two features if you are looking at the interaction between two features uh, with uh, the partial dependence values and this will get uh, become clear as we look at these plots so in this very first plot we on the left hand side we have the house value uh, the partial dependence of these features average occupancy and house age on house value So here we can see that as the average occupancy increases uh, The house value seems to go down and That relationship is almost linear up to three occupancy and after that there is slight curve in the uh, in this particular line and house age it seems to increase uh, in this particular fashion as shown here. So these are the two findings we can see when we create a partial dependence plot. Additionally, if we plot average occupancy versus house age uh, and on the z-axis if we have the house value which is shown here by contours, then we can see that as we move away from two, the effect of average occupancy seems to diminish on the house value. So most, for most part, it's the lower average occupancy values that affect the house value together with the house age. And here is a code snippet. Uh, we have, this code is copied directly from the docs. We have this generated data with X and Y values. We fit a classifier to it and then for creating the partial dependence plot, we uh, write the code as shown here. Partial dependence display dot from estimator, and then we have this a classifier x features and target. Similar, and this is the output of the code that I just show. And in addition to what the partial the partial dependence plot shows us the average curve. So the curves that we saw that that was just the average line. However, with the ICE plots, we can plot each individual sample as shown here by these faint blue lines. And in addition to that, we can also overlay a PDP curve on top of that, which is shown here by this dotted orange line, which is the average. So the IC plot tell us additional information such as some features are more, for example, in this median income feature, uh, some lines are more steep than others. So uh, there is variation between samples in the data set that affect the value of the house. But the average trend seems to be that it is going up. So as the median in income increases, the house values also seems to increase. And here is the code snippet for the this plot, IC plots, and this is again from copied from the docs. We have partial dependence dot dependence display dot from estimator, and we have TLF X features and kind is equal to individual. And this is the plot we get. It, this plot does not make much sense, uh, but 
because this was the data set that was created but overall uh, as you can see if you work with uh, a good data set then you should be able to see these lines uh, along with as uh, shown here for each of the features now let's look at permutation feature importance this is another way to visualize the importance of a feature and the way this is done is, you, is let's say if you have the rainfall temperature features and your target is crop yield what you do is you uh, shuffle so you randomly shuffle the feature and then fit it to the model and see if that has any effect on the final score and if it does have an effect it means that that feature could be important now there are several caveats to this and i've put the warning from the docs here so you may pause the video to read this but overall it's possible that if there are collinear features and you randomly shuffle just one of them still the other one would be there and that could affect the uh, model accuracy so when working with permutation feature importance uh, there is something to keep in mind here is the code snippet for that this is the diabetes data set and this is the score 0 0.47 and when we perform the permutation importance we may get the scores for each of the features we have bmi s5 s1 and this looks like it's blood pressure so these are the top features and we can see the average importance we can see that the, if we add these importances together they add up close to 0 0.47 with these standard deviations and so this is one way we can uh, uh, find the importance of the features within a data set and here there are options where we can specify different types of matrix so different matrix would give different rankings of what feature is important so that's also possible using this particular method of permutation importance so that was it for this video i hope in this video you got some intuition about how to inspect a model that you have made and find out if there are any uh, additional if if there is any additional insight you can get into the model by performing this type of visualizations and finding the permutation importance if you have any comments or suggestions please let me know in the comment section below i hope to see you all in the next video thank you